A very good day to you people. My name is Mohit and guys today I'm going to talk about how to make an analog clock using the date glass. Uh, what's good about this clock is guys it has the cuckoo sound that happens after every one hour and it also has the tick sound that happens after every single second. Alright, let's check the timeline. Uh, if I check the timeline tab here we have the assets layer and we have the actions layer. on the assets layer I have all the assets by which I mean the body of the clock the needles the arms that rotate and even this uh, yellow circle that's hiding the three needles at the bottom so everything has been placed on the very single uh, layer and very single frame it has just one layer and one frame for the assets let me hide it up you see everything has uh, vanished which means all the assets were placed on that single first frame and on the same layer the assets layer and the actions uh, layer guys holds the action script 3 okay let me break this uh, clock up let me take apart the needles all right guys this longest needle or the longest arm is the minute hand seconds hand I'm sorry the one to the left of it is the minute hand and the one the red one to the right of it the shortest one is the R hand and they've been named let me go to the actions panel they've been named uh, the second hand the minute hand and the R hand respectively I'll, I'll show it to you in the property inspector as well this uh, longest one is called the second hand the shorter one is called the minute hand and the shortest one has been called the R hand guys uh, they have already been converted to movie clips and the registration point is here the base of all the three needles or the arms or the hands that is the so the center bottom bottom center is the uh, registration point and the registration point for the clock body of the clock is bang in the center where you see this uh, yellow dot or the yellow circle now let me reset the position so I'm gonna say control Z again and again and again all right so I've reset the position of the clock okay the body of the clock has not been given any instance name it I was not required to do so neither the yellow dot has an instance name again there was no need for me it was not uh, necessary okay now guys uh, before I I actually go inside the actions panel and explain the action script 3 to you I would like to tell you that I've set the frames per second to 1 look at the bottom here it says 1 FPS the default is 24 but I've set it to 1 FPS guys now let me dig inside the actions panel and explain the action script to you in line number one guys I've uh, created an enter frame event now what enter frame events do is they fire off uh, after every FPS or after every one second in my case but usually they will fire off uh, 24 times in one second normally usually when you don't change the default FPS which is set to 24 so guys what I've done is, is by setting the FPS to 1 and using the enter frame uh, event I've actually avoided using the timer class now doing so I've actually saved on a uh, few lines of action script 3 and it's actually made the code very very simple to uh, uh, for me to explain to you it's become uh, short and sweet okay now what happens after every one second uh, a function called timer handler gets fired off and let's see what is inside the function timer handler or the time handler I'm sorry so the function time handler is uh, covering line uh, line uh, number uh, lines number 5 through 13 okay what I'm gonna do is let me disable certain uh, or let me comment out certain uh, certain uh, commands here a certain methods here okay certain properties so let me comment out this bit and let me comment out this bit as well let me also comment out line number 11 and line number 13 now line number 11 and line number 13 are responsible for playing the sound we'll talk about all these grayed out areas a little later guys okay 
what I'm going to focus is this bit, only this bit, okay, and not the one, you know, not the part, or not the area that's been grayed out, okay. Now, guys, uh, let's check out what happens after every one single second. I've created a variable current date of the type date is equal to new date. Uh, doing so, I've instantiated the date class. Okay, wonderful. Next, what I've done is once you instantiate the date class, you can then retrieve current date dot seconds. Now, dot seconds is the property. Okay, so if I say trace current date dot seconds, it'll tell me the number of seconds right now. Okay, I can also I can also retrieve the current date dot minutes. This will retrieve the the, the current minutes, and I can also retrieve guys the current date dot hours. So this 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 will give you this will give you the number of hours, the hour, the you know whether it's two o'clock, three o'clock, whether it's uh, thirty five minutes or thirty six minutes, whether it's uh, 57 seconds or 59 seconds whatever okay so by by uh, instantiating the date class and then using the seconds property the minutes property and the hours property I can then retrieve the current hour the current minute and the current seconds guys okay so what I've done is I have rotated using the rotation property the second hand the longest needle by as much as the current uh, you know the the number of seconds multiplied by six so if it's two seconds if I multiply that by six that makes it 12 so the degree rotation should be 12 and uh, if it's three seconds should be 18 so uh, this is uh, mathematics guys I will not talk about how I actually arrived uh, uh, at this formula but uh, to keep it very simple 360 seconds uh, sorry 60 sec we have 60 seconds and it has to go around 360 degrees so that's 360 divided by uh, 60 that will give you 6 so every time a second happens or a second increments you get uh, a change of 6 degrees out here okay similarly whenever there is a change of a minute of one single minute we again have a change of six degrees similarly so here in line number seven i've rotated the minute hand by as much as the current minute multiplied by six that will give me uh, the value and i will be rotating the minute hand by as much okay uh, similarly after every one single hour guys the needle the arm or the um, our hand rotates by as much as 30 degrees now it does not rotate by as much as 60 but this time it rotates by as much as 30 degrees okay so uh, what will happen here is after every one single second we'll see the second hand change by six degrees the minute hand change by six degrees and uh, after every one hour we'll change the our needle change by as much as 30 degrees now what was the need for me to add this bit and this bit okay let me uncomment it first now again uh, this involves uh, some mathematics I'll not go into the details of it by but by just adding current date dot seconds property divided by 10 I get the minute hand rotation real time by which I mean if I did not have this highlighted part added to this uh, action step 3 or the actions panel what would have happened the minute hand would update only after one single minute that is not what I want if you actually have a look on your wristwatch maybe or on a clock it's it's rotating all the time by a very minute uh, angle or a degree and to make that possible I had to add this and the same theory is true here as well so I wouldn't want my R to update by 30 degrees only after uh, you know uh, one hour but I would want to ha uh, it to happen all the time so this is where this formula comes into question so by adding uh, these two lines guys I've actually made sure that the minute hand and the hour hand rotate real time all the time after every single second okay guys now line numbers 11 and 13 let me 
uncomment them or remove the comment are responsible for playing the sound line number 11 is responsible for playing the cuckoo sound after every one hour and uh, the line, line number 13 is responsible for playing the tick sound after every single second okay um, again guys you should know how to play sounds uh, through action script 3 okay if you don't know um, maybe it'll be difficult for you to understand in which case i would say just uh, see the formula copied straight away cheat okay i will not be going into uh, a lot of detail of how to place uh, you know sounds but i would like to tell you that both these sounds are in the library this is the the cuckoo.mp3 and this is the tick.mp3 and before i can actually pull it up through the action script and play it i need to do some prep work i need to do some preparation and let's see what is the preparation that i've done let me first uh, delete both the sounds i'll get them back again let me delete the cuckoo sound as well mm, all right now i need to say a file and an import then i need to say import to library after which i need to uh, go to the you know the folder that hosts these uh, sounds so let me go you know highlight both the sounds together and say open they should be in the library now so we have the cuckoo and the tick mp3 let me first play the tick sound to back to you all right that's one single tick that you heard momentarily and this is the cuckoo sound guys all right so it plays four times all right then what i need to do is i said we need to do some prep prep work before i can actually play the sound through the action script uh, what i need to do is one by one i'll right click on the very first sound go to properties then i'll say then i'll choose the action script panel guys i'm using action script uh, you know i'm using flash 5.5 it may be uh, it may be the advanced uh, uh, tab or the button on uh, i think if you're using flash uh, cs5 then I need to say export for action script and then I need to say cuckoo I'll remove the dot mp3 so I'm giving it a class name and the class name is cuckoo then I need to say okay ignore the warning that comes up that pops up and I'm, I'm gonna say okay I'll follow the same routine with the tick sound right click properties action script tab export for action script remove the mp3 extension and I should be good to go all right so if everything is fine let me test the movie awesome let me change the time mm, let me get it back to let's say 859 I'll say okay and okay once again so as soon as the green needle hits the 12 o'clock uh, mark you should uh, hear the cuckoo once again we are almost there guys there it goes lovely so guys i hope you enjoyed this uh, analog clock with a slight edge uh, you may have seen certain other tutorials on youtube but they don't carry the sound part let me get back to the actions uh, panel guys i've had this spray statement now this is only for the testing purpose i'm gonna get rid of this uh, line right also guys let me try and explain in short how do we play the sounds here in line number 10 i have an if conditional which says if minute hand dot rotation is equal to is equal to zero now the minute hand guys the longest of the green needle will come at 12 only once in one hour only once in one hour okay and that is when the minute hand rotation will equal zero so whenever one hour gets completed I'm storing the cuckoo sound in a variable called my sound this is the instantiation guys and then I'm playing that sound starting position number zero or from the very starting this is the starting position guys that zero that number is the starting position in milliseconds so started bang from the very as uh, you know start started from the start started from the home 
okay uh, and then this one is the number of loops so I just wanted to loop once okay all right and uh, in line number 12 what I've done is I've instantiated the tick sound all right and then I've played the tick sound I've not used these two uh, parameters I've not used these parameters I can I can play without these parameters as well I can uh, do away with the number of loops as well as the start point and this play is the text sound guys so all very good all very nice uh, I'll see you very soon with yet another flash or dream tutorial you have a good time bye bye peace